Good to be back in the house of the Lord this evening. We're glad to have each and every one of you in, in our Bible study Saturday night. And uh, we want to welcome you in. We want to welcome each and every one of you in virtually with us also. We want you to join in with us and, and allow the Lord to speak to our hearts this evening. And, and the Lord will help us to learn and grow from his word. So we thank God for each and every one of you. Just want to make sure everyone remember to pray for one another. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of people uh, sick in one way or another. And um, people that we know, people that we don't know that are sick with the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus. And, and, and then there's people that are suffering from other illnesses as well that we need to remember to pray that God will touch and heal and help people uh, during these hours of difficulty and challenges. And, and uh, there's a lot of people that are suffering more than you probably realize. So just remember to pray. And we're glad to be here tonight. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayers. And we do want to encourage you to support the ministry never underestimate the part that you play it might not be much or it may not be sometimes people don't think that what they can do matters but it's not true everyone doing their part helps the work get done mm -hmm. no matter what it is so but anyway we're glad to have you we welcome you in and we thank you sincerely for your prayers. Remember our service tomorrow and service tomorrow evening. Uh, the morning service is at 11 a.m. And then our evening service is at 6 o'clock p.m. I would like to uh, return to James. It's been a couple of weeks or so. And once again, I thank Reverend Steele for uh, teaching last Saturday being a blessing, and uh, I believe he taught from um, Psalm 23, and uh, we appreciate that's a beautiful book, beautiful chapter of the book of Psalms, beautiful book and chapter. But anyway, we thank God for that, and we appreciate him, appreciate each and every one of you, uh, your love and your faithfulness. Uh, let us pray, uh, Reverend. Amen. Amen. Never underestimate the power of God's word. Never underestimate the power of God's word in your life. You reading the word of God, praying the word of God, studying the word of God, and then living Never underestimate reading the Word of God, praying the Word of God, studying the Word of God, and then living or practicing the Word of God. It will change your life forever. It will change your life forever. And I believe that there is a fundamental breakdown in and among the church and even outside the church there's people uh, walking around talking about this and that and it's not and, and it's important to read the Bible it's important to know the Bible but it's very important to understand the Bible and live the Bible that's where the rubber meets the road. It's not what you know. It's what you do with what you know. That's, that's, that's where the rubber meets the road. So we want to go back and review James chapter 1, verse 17 through 18. I, I just feel like it would be a good thing to do. We're thankful once again for the power of 
God's word. All right? And let me read this to you. Thank God, Reverend Steele has already prayed. So, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. That word variableness uh, is, a, is is there's a couple words. Fickle. God is not fickle. That word means, you know, one way one minute, one way the next, one way one minute one. You know, so there's a lot of people that way. And it's amazing how from one minute to the next, or one hour to the next, or one day to the next, one day they're one way, and then the next day or the next moment they're uh, different. Now, that really kind of sounds like somebody that may be bipolar, but let's call it spiritual bipolar, all right? And, and we don't want to make light of that because people that suffer so people that suffer from this stuff, uh, it's, it's pretty serious. So we, we, we're not making light. But there are people who might not necessarily have medical bipolar or be a medical bipolar person. But as far as their character and lack of integrity, they are one way one minute and one way the next. It's hard for a person to trust you and work with you in that environment. Amen? But anyway, um, so anyway, uh, of who, of the Bible says when there's no variableness, he's not fickle. And another word is transmutation. Transmutation, going from one stage to another or from one thing to another. God doesn't do that. The Bible said Jesus Christ the same yesterday. If you ask God, if you ask God about something today and then you pray and ask him again tomorrow, he's not going to give you two or three different answers. Unless your situation changes. You get that? If your situation is exactly the way it is, and you pray, or you look to God, or you can't read the Bible, and the Bible says something, but because you don't like it or you don't agree with it, you're going to manipulate it to be what you want it to be. So you can justify yourself. God doesn't work that way. When you pray, you're not going to twist God's arm to make him answer. You either don't pray. A lot of times we don't pray. Or we'll pray and try to twist God's arm. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. And I'm so thankful for the times that I prayed. I didn't understand, and I didn't know exactly what God was doing, but I followed, and I looked to him, and I trusted his answer, and as time went on, or as the weeks went by, I said, thank you, God, thank you, God, that I listened, and I responded as you would have what would have wanted me to, all right? Verse 18, of his own will begat us with the word of truth. He begat us. God brought us into this reality. God brought us, birthed us. We were birthed into Christianity with the word of truth, with the truth. So, if we were birthed or brought into the word of truth, how could we be any other way? I was birthed into this world as a woods. I'm going to always be a woods. You can 
call me whatever you want to call me. You can say about me whatever you want to say about me. But William L. Woods Sr. is my father and Mary L. Woods is my mother. It's going to always be that way. If you were birthed, the Bible said, listen at this, of his own will begat us, he us, with the word of truth. If you were brought into this, by God, if you were birthed or begat, like this will begat that, and that begat, if God brought you into this with truth, that's all you should be. You should be a Christian of truth. If you were born into it properly, if God really brought you into this. You see, it's a lot of people got an answer. They, they, we, we strut around here and we uh, present ourselves in this way. The Bible says that he brought, he begat us with the word of truth. If you were born into truth, then truth should, that's, that's who you should be. Jesus said, know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free, make you free. Who's the truth? Jesus is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the what? So when you're born again, when you're brought into the reality of Christianity, according to this scripture, you should be a child of truth. All right? That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Of all the things that God brought into existence. We should be the prime creation. All right? It's just like when you pay your time, that 10% is the main thing. You give God what's due him, right? The first fruits. All right? Anyway, in that, we want to focus on three things. We already went over these scriptures some weeks ago, but we're going to focus on the gifts of God, the gift of God, and the gifts of God being good and perfect. Good and perfect. But before I do that, I have to do something that God wants me. I received a phone call this morning. And the person that called me may listen to this, may listen to it now, or may be listening to it or look at this later. They know who they are. But, and God blessed us to be able to help and give direction and give counsel in a very pressure and a, a very difficult situation. God was able to help us. And so what I want to do tonight, before I finish up this Bible study, I want to encourage you, if you're out there, you uh, a part of this ministry, or if you're looking at this and you have a pastor, we have this pandemic going on, the coronavirus, and along with us being in this environment, other things come into play. Like job situation may be in question. Your finances may be in flux. Your family may be going through some type of uh, dysfunction or dis difficulty. And there may be other issues that may stem from everything else that is going on. And so the Lord directed me to let you know feel free to reach out. Feel free to call, to, to uh, text, to message us. If you are experiencing trauma or 
or some difficulty or uh, emotional situation, you're going through something because what I want to tell you is that this is the perfect time with all of this chaos and all of this mayhem going on and people not going to church the way they should. A lot of people not even watching on, on, online the way you should or the way they should. They're not reading their Bible, not praying, and a lot of people not paying their tithe, and a whole lot of other things that go along with being a Christian or being a uh, Christianity. So this is the perfect time for the devil to move in and attack your life. This is the perfect time for him during the moment of vulnerability to move in on you and attack your mind, attack your life, attack your family. And you need, and, and, and whatever the case may be, reach out to us. Feel free to call or text or message us. Matter of fact, I got two. Uh, not just the number I think about, there's another person that reached out to me in another desperate situation as well. Both of them. This is this stuff is serious, people. This is not a game. People's lives, people are dying. Lives of, there are people really going through trials and tribulations. There's a lot of people out here who are in financial uh, uh, problems and their jobs are uncertain and, and families are having problems and people don't know whether or not their children are going to be able to go to school or not. And they got to work and they don't know what they're going to do and, some people can afford to do the homeschooling. Some people can't. And on and on and on. And the death is the perfect time for him to slip a spiritual Mickey in on your life. To mess up you. Especially if you have not been praying. If you have not been reading your Bible and studying. If you have not been doing what you're supposed to be doing. It would be very easy in the midst of all of this. And God is reaching out tonight. God is calling you. God is dealing with the minds and the hearts of men and women. And say, call upon me. Call on the Lord while he may be found. Call on the Lord while he is near. Call on the Lord. Do what you have to do. Don't sit back and just let the devil destroy you. Or you destroy yourself. Do what you got to do. And say, I don't care about being embarrassed. I don't care about my pride and my ego. We need help. I need help. I need instruction. I need counsel. I'm not ashamed. I, uh, not too long ago, uh, my wife and I, we got some things we want to do in life. We got some goals we want to reach in life. And we got some things that we want to do. And I reached out to our pastor and talked to him and, and get to get guidance. And I'm sharing that because I'm just trying to tell you because there are some things you do in life there are some things that go on in your life that's bigger than you. That's bigger than your stinking pride and your uh, not, I don't want nobody to know I'm struggling. Or I don't want anybody to know uh, I need to know uh, some, I need to talk to somebody that knows more about this than me. So if you're out there and you're struggling and you're having a hard time, it may not be here. But wherever your church is or wherever your city is or wherever your location is, reach out to somebody. Talk to somebody that you know can help you. Don't suffer in vain. Don't suffer needlessly, rather, and, and unnecessarily. Anyway, so the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Now, what is a gift? A gift is a thing 
given to someone willingly without payment. A gift is something that is given to someone willingly without payment. Let's look at some of the gifts that have been given us. You want to walk down gift lane with me? Gift Avenue, Gift Boulevard, whatever you want to call it. But we have been given a lot of gifts, folks. And they're good gifts. And they're perfect. What's a good gift? A beneficial gift. What's a perfect gift? A complete gift. A gift of complete and, and, and the gifts that make us whole. Complete in God. All right? The first gift that we've been given is found in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he what? If you have Jesus, you have the greatest gift. Of all. The gift of, of saving. Oh God. I'm so glad that when I was lost and without God, that God provided me a savior at no cost. Salvation is free. Salvation is free, but it's not cheap. Are you with me? Jesus is free, but he wasn't cheap because it cost him his life. It's free for you, but it's not cheap. So the first gift is a gift of a Savior, Jesus Christ. What's the second gift, preacher? Would you like to know? I'm just kidding. People ask me that when I'm at work, when I'm going around. How are you doing today? I wouldn't you like to know. And they just bust out laughing because they don't expect me to say it. And I'll say, I'm just kidding. I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. You know, that type of thing. But people get a kick out of that. Wouldn't you like to know? But anyway, would you really or are you just saying that out of habit? You know, we say things to people. Good morning. Do you really want that person to have a good morning? How are you doing? Or do you really want to know how that person is doing? Or is this just something you're saying? Because it's the proper thing to say. And if we don't really mean it, we should not say it. The Bible says that we're going to answer for every idle word. Every idle word that we, we got to give an account for. Just saying things to people. Just If you don't mean Alright? That, that's that's pretty, pretty serious, really, when you think about it. But anyway, the book of Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We have the gift of a Savior, and then you need the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now there's two different things. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the other. And then you have the gifts of the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Spirit, rather. And that's a whole other thing in Corinthians and whatnot for another time. But the gift of the Holy Ghost is you receiving the baptism in, with, and of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. As the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost is come upon you. 
And ye shall be what witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You are doing yourself a disservice if you do not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I don't care that people have told you it's not for us and it was just for the early church or just for the disciples and just to set the record straight. Just to set the record straight. Let's look at it real quick and then we're through. Now I read to you Acts 2.38 and you shall receive the gift. Let's look at verse 239. Acts chapter 2 verse 39 and it'll tell you who's supposed to have the Holy Ghost. Alright? For the promise of this or for the promise is unto you and to your children and even as many as the Lord our God shall what? Call. That sounds pretty universal, don't it? Sounds, sounds uh, not, this wasn't just for the disciples or just for the people in the early church. You need the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right? And then Romans 5 and 17. Romans 5 and 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. Now you know who that's talking about. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Adam brought death by sin into the human race. And Jesus, through the grace of God, brought righteousness. You know why you can live right? You know why you can live holy? You know why you can do the right thing? Because in Christ, you have the gift of righteousness. Right? You have the gift of being fair, equitable, and balanced. To live a balanced, holy, spiritual life and look at people different, look at people properly and correctly. And I've had people say to me when they come and talk to my wife and I about some very serious things. I've never said this. I've never said these things to anybody. Uh, I, you know, they, they want to know if their information is going to be safe with us. We got to, as Christians and as leaders, we got to learn how. And they were concerned that are you going to look at us differently? Are you going to look at me differently? Oh, of, of course not. We're here to help. We're here to help you. We're here to be a blessing to you. To nurture you. To, to, to bring you up in the things of God. And sometimes we have to know information and deal with things that are dirty and, 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 and filth and whatnot. But with God's help, we can come through that. All right? Are we, are we still doing okay? gift of a Savior, the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of righteousness, and then Romans 6 and 23. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Not only do we have the gift of Satan. Not only do we have the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of righteousness, but the gift of eternal life. 
This is when we when we come into the reality of serving God, it is forever. God never intended for people to quit. God never intended for people to stop serving him. God never intended for people to give up what he did for them. God saved you for eternity. But you have to do your part. You have to do your part. He's not going to come down and pray for you. He's not going to come down and read and study and be faithful to his house and all that. God, not. you have to do your part. The Bible says that, it, what is it in Philippians? I can do, I can do. If there was not a part that you're supposed to play, why is that scripture in there? I can do all things through who? But he's not going to come down and do your part and his part. You got to bring things to him. You got to do things in him, through him, and by him. When you pray, when you read and study the word of God, when you're faithful to his house, when you pay your tithe and do all the stuff that you're supposed to do, then God steps in there and makes up the difference. He blesses your prayer time. He blesses your study time. He blesses your faithfulness to his house. And he blesses your finances through your giving. And on and on and on. So, in finishing, concerning this good gift and perfect gift, the first barrier, I want to finish with this tonight, the first barrier to meekness, the first barrier or that which blocks you or hinders you or stops you to meekness it arises whenever we claim as our own what is really a gift of God. The first barrier to meekness go up when you start claiming the gifts that God gave you. They're, they're not yours, they're from God. You're just using them. They don't belong to you. I dare you get proud. I dare you allow yourself to get lifted up. They're not yours. They're God's. Salvation comes from God. Jesus came from the Father. He, he sent them down to us. The Holy Ghost comes from the Lord. Righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. I can do all things through who? Christ. That what? Strengthen me. So what? We, we talk a good lesson on we preach it. I'm not shooting at you, Reverend. I'm just sharing. So we have to make sure because the devil, you know how he is. Sometimes he try to be. But anyway, or we may help somebody or, and, and I'm sharing that too for my own because sometimes you're not careful. People say, oh, that was a great message. That was a great lesson. Oh, that was it. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you, brother. And, and move on. And sometimes we, you know, we do things for people and we want credit for them. And all these things. We have to remember that it's because of God. You love people because of God. Love comes from God. Real agape love comes from God. Every good gift and every perfect gift, gift, comes from the God of lights, in whom there is no variableness. God, I thank you tonight. Forgive me if I ever try to take credit for anything that you have ever done with me, by me, through me, or whatever. God, I just want you to be worshipped. I want you to be praised. I want you to receive the glory. Oh, God, I understand that I am an unprofitable servant. The only reason why you're using me is because you choose to use me. Oh, I thank you.
thank you for your mercy and your grace this evening in this Bible study. I pray that you bless those that are listening, those that are online, or those that will look later. Bless them and help them. I pray, God, that your will will be accomplished this night. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. God, we thank you. God bless you. It's our sincere prayer. We look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow at 11 o'clock. God bless you. Have a good evening.